What is up everyone, welcome to Escape Portal. I am Antone, and this is the best of March, where I go over the most impactful things that happened in the VR industry in the past month. This can range from games, hardware, all the way to news topics. If I had to describe the past month, I would say it's been chaotically awesome. There was way too many solid titles that dropped in the past month, which in a way kind of sucks because there's no way that everyone's going to be able to buy and play all of these games, even though everyone probably should. I feel like any one of these games probably would have sold better if they would have just pushed the date back a little bit, but you're not gonna see me complain very often about good games. The first two titles that I want to talk about are titles that I'm not going to give a score to because one is a beta and the other one is early access. So I'm going to kick it off with maybe even the best game that I played this entire month and that is the Contractor Showdown open beta. If you guys have been watching my channel then you know that I'm more of a single player and co-op guy than a multiplayer PvP guy. But this just might be the most addictive multiplayer PvP game that I've ever played in VR. As a guy who really did like Population 1, Contractor Showdown really does make it look like a kids game. I love the more realistic weapons. I love the gigantic island. I love the weapon selection. I love the progression system. I love the graphics, especially on PC. This game might end up being the best multiplayer PvP game that I've ever played in VR. Now, of course, there are still small bugs and glitches, but it's a beta. That's why I'm not giving it a score. I like this game a lot more than I thought I was going to, and once we get the full release, I don't think that I'm ever going to stop playing this game. I was beyond impressed, and if you did not get to play the beta, make sure you keep an eye out for this one, because based on what I played, this is probably going to be one of the better games of the year. Okay, now I want to talk about Heartshot. Everyone who has been watching my channel knows that I was really excited about this game, and it seems like a lot of people are trashing this game because of the state that it's currently in. There are way too many bugs for this to be playable. However, I am happy to report that everything I was hoping about this game is turning out to be true. The bones of a really good game are actually here. People are forgetting that this is an early access title that we're only getting the first part for. I know some people have different views on early access, but it can be used in completely different ways. And the way I see this game is that we're incredibly early in a game that has potential to be exactly what I was hoping it was going to be. I would be more upset if the game ran perfectly, but didn't have solid engaging gameplay. I still think that they have a lot of work to do if they want to make this game become really good, but it does have that potential. It's just going to be a really long time before we actually see the real finished product. I really wouldn't recommend anyone play it in its current state, but keep an eye out because I do believe it's going to be a good game someday. Definitely not one to overlook. All right, let's get into a game that does not need any work at all that I absolutely loved. Stilt is a game that I like to describe as a mini masterpiece. And I say mini because it's not a masterpiece, but it's one of those games that I just love so much much despite its flaws. I do have a thing for platformers, especially first person platformers in VR, but one thing about this game that's going to be divisive right off the bat is the locomotion system. It does have that no more rainbows, gorilla tag style movement, which can have its downsides. It does seem to be evolving with every new game that has that style of movement. Out of Hand had a little bit more of a bounce to it and still probably has the best of the bunch. I don't know why most first person platformers in VR aren't allowed to have a jump button. I'd really like to see a first person platformer with the level of polish and detail in a game like No More Rainbows or Stilt that has a jump button. But honestly, for me personally, it's not actually an issue. I don't mind the movement. In fact, I think it's actually pretty fun if you don't mind physical activity. Not to mention the skill that is required in order to pull off some of these very precise movements is something that we just don't see enough of in VR, and I hope we start to see more of. This game does give me a bit of that VR Mario fix that I was hoping for. There are a few minor gripes that I have, like enemy variety, and a few positives, like the power-ups and the addition of a multiplayer mode. I do wish that there was co-op in the main campaign though. I would love to do it all over again with a friend. I'm not sure how much of my love for this game comes from the fact that I love platformers and crazy locomotion systems in VR, but overall I think that this game is actually a big win. If you've been looking for a really good first person platformer and don't mind the movement style, I think that still is a must buy on any platform. And it looks amazing on the Quest 3 if you're using the Quest Games Optimizer. This game is a solid 8.4 out of 10 for me. I really enjoyed this game. Staying on the topic of amazing platformers, Max Mustard was a game that I kind of brushed off initially. The name seemed a little bit tacky to me, and the initial gameplay that I seen seemed a little bit basic like Lucky's Tale. But then I started doing research for my last top 10 most anticipated games list. And the more I dug up about this game, the more I started to realize that this game had far more complex level mechanics than I initially thought. And that is exactly what I experienced while playing this game. No two levels are the same. There is a huge amount of creativity put into every single level 
level. It's a charming world to be in and honestly a bit of a breath of fresh air. We haven't seen anything like this with this kind of vibe or style in VR in a long time. This game is just fantastic, guys. If you like Lucky's Tale or Vin VR Adventure, you're going to love this game because it's way better than both of those. In fact, I would say that this is the best third-person platformer that I've ever played in VR. And that is because I've never actually gotten to fully play Astrobot. I've played the PS5 Astro's Playroom on flat, and I played a tiny bit of Astrobot Rescue Mission at an arcade in my early VR days for like 30 minutes. But that wasn't enough to get a good feel for what the game is. But from what I can tell, Max is not quite on the level of Astrobot, but it's still by far the best third-person platformer on the Quest platform. And I even include Moss in that. I am more of a traditional platformer guy than a puzzle platformer guy, so keep that in mind. But I think that Max is that good. As amazing as it was, it wasn't without its flaws. I think that we could have had a little bit more animated story. The cinematic sequences that were in this game were actually really well done. I feel like it was a missed opportunity because through those cinematic sequences, we could have built up an even better relationship with the main character, Max. And that right there is my only gripe that I have. I did like the character of Max, but I wish I loved the character of Max. And I do think that with a little bit more effort, they could have achieved that. It's a minor gripe, but if I had to nitpick, that's something that I wish we seen more of. The game looks pretty good on the Quest 3, but infinitely better with the Quest Games Optimizer. I was running this game at 150% resolution at 90 frames per second, and the game didn't even hiccup. I hope the developers bring an official resolution increase to the Quest 3, because I just finished the game, and I'm telling you right now, the Quest 3 can handle it. I'm gonna give this game the same score that I gave to Underdogs, a nine out of 10. This is one of the best Quest games that has released this year so far. Okay, now it's time to get into Swarm 2. And I think a part of this review is going to sound pretty negative, but it's just because of the type of gamer that I am. It has nothing to do with the quality of the game itself. In fact, I just want to make it clear really quick that this game nails what it sets out to do. Using the Quest Games Optimizer, the game looked absolutely beautiful. There's a level of polish and quality that just felt really good. Not to mention the locomotion system is so good that it makes me wish that we had a locomotion system like that in a full city or even a linear story-based game. And this is where the game is a little bit disappointing for me personally. I am not a fan of wave-based arena fighters. I used to be. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in games like Blade and Sorcery or Hell Split Arena. It's just something that I can't get into anymore. Arena fighters feel like a piece of a game to me, unless there's deep story involved. That's why I don't really like games like Blade and Sorcery anymore, even though the mechanics are great, just like Swarm. In fact, the only arena fighter that I've ever fell in love with is Underdogs, but that's because it makes sense in the story and it's very well disguised by all of the extra elements involved. I didn't even think once about the fact that it was an arena fighter until after I completed the game. In this game, the only thing that's going on is swinging around and shooting. They did add some roguelike elements, but they're very bare bones. Again, this is just my opinion on the game. If I thought the game was actually bad, then I would say that, but I don't think that it's bad. I think that it's really good. I just don't think that it's for me. For me, it's about a seven, but I have to acknowledge that this type of game is actually very popular in VR, and I think that there's a huge audience for this style of game. So if you do like this kind of game, you're going to love this. I just hope that eventually these developers make a game that takes place in a big city like Resist, or even a linear-based story game, because the grappling mechanics are awesome, and I hate to see it wasted in a stagnant location. That's just my opinion. With all things considered, as unbiased as I can be, I would say that this game is a solid 7.8. It's a very fun and unique arcade shooter that you can jump in anytime, even if you haven't been in for months, and pick it right back up. That's really the strength of this game. All right, let's get into Medieval Dynasty. I have to be honest, guys. I was not looking forward to playing this game. I usually have to be in the right state of mind to play a survival game because there's always so much to learn and keep up on. It's almost too much for me sometimes. But wow, was I wrong about this game. For some reason, I'm addicted to this game. This might be my favorite survival game that I've ever played in VR. It's super chill and kind of eases you in. It has a very charming vibe and it has a fantastic sense of adventure, which if you watch my channel, then you know, gives the game a lot of points for me. It's certainly not your average short VR game either. It has its way of feeling not very daunting despite having a very high level of depth. I love seeing all of the wildlife roaming around. The crafting and the VR elements involved are very satisfying. I feel like this game just took everything that I dislike about survival games and fixed it just for me. This was a surprise hit for me. I'm legitimately feeling like this is one of the best quest games that I've played this year. There are some negatives. I've had some performance issues and there are some weird screen glitches happening, but I have been playing on a pre-release build. So I wouldn't doubt if all of that stuff is corrected for the official release. The graphics aren't very good even by quest standards, 
but they're not terrible for an open world game. And I found myself actually enjoying the look of the game over time, even though I can be a little bit of a graphic snob. Is this game of the year status? No, not with games like Behemoth and Wanderer around the corner, but is this a really awesome and chill survival game that I'm gonna keep coming back to? Hell yeah, it is. This game really surprised me, and you might give me shit for this, but I'm actually gonna give this an 8.8 .8 out of 10. I liked it that much. You might not, who knows, but if you're into this kind of game, I'd be surprised if you don't. If you have played this game, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below because this was the biggest surprise of the month for me. If this game had high res PC VR level graphics, this would be like a 9.5 out of 10 and a front runner for game of the year. That's how good the gameplay is. All right, I guess it's time to talk about Happy Fun Land. I got this game on PC because I was hearing a lot about the graphical and frame rate inconsistencies on PlayStation VR 2. So for this review, that's the version I'm gonna be referencing. I've never felt such a big contrast in how I feel about a game. This game is so bad and so good at the same time. On one hand, the production values, the graphics, the level design, the character design, and overall aesthetic of the game is really good. There are some moments in this game that I was actually shockingly impressed by. But then the combat is quite literally some of the worst combat I've ever experienced in a VR game. It's almost like they didn't put any thought into it at all. And it's a shame because the animations that take place when you defeat an enemy are actually really cool. Another bad part about the gameplay is the golf physics. It's something that you have to do in this game in order to move forward. But it seems like they had zero experience with any sort of sports physics at all. There are also a lot of glitches and bugs. For some reason, my game is not saving. Initially, I put over two hours into the game. And when I attempted to play it again, I was forced back into a new game and had to restart my progress from the beginning. There is way too much wrong with this game for me to recommend it. But with that being said, there are really phenomenal highs in this game. I feel like if they decided to remove the combat and mini golf altogether, this would have made a really fun walking simulator, spooky experience type game that with a little bit more polish, I would have recommended. If they vastly improved the combat and the golfing physics, this game would actually be really good. I feel like it has potential to be in the high eights territory, but as of right now, there's no way that I could give it higher than a 5.5. There are just too many things that are broken. Sometimes animatronics will stop in place and then glitch behind you. Fighting the enemies feels like you're just wiggling your hand in the air and you have to hit them like 10 times for it to register sometimes. But while I'm attempting to hit them and they're just standing there in front of me, I can't help but notice how great the character design is and how good the game looks, how great the design of the park is. It's a very mixed bag for me in polar opposite ways. This is one of those games that's so bad that it's good. I can't deny that I'm enjoying it more than I probably should. It's it's a little bit of a spectacle. I can't really recommend it in its current state, but if you do go into this game with the right expectations, there is a lot of fun to be had here. Okay, let's talk about Overdark. A lot of people are giving it a ton of praise, which is good because it's a really good game, but in some ways it's really a mixed bag for me. Let's start with the positives. When you play a game like this in Happy Fun Land, it really takes you back to the old PC VR days. This is exactly why I bought a PlayStation VR 2 for these types of games that look like this. The graphics here are fantastic. I thought there was gonna be a little bit of combat in this game, but it's much more of a horror survival puzzle adventure. The puzzles can be pretty clever. The vibe feels really good overall. The voice acting is done well, and I actually thought the production values were really solid. You really don't see anything like this on the Quest platform. This is what makes the high-end platforms shine. Despite the graphics looking really good on PlayStation VR 2, I did find the resolution to be a little bit low. I know not everyone is like this, but for me personally, I would rather have sharp visuals and slightly worse graphics than the other way around. It makes it harder to appreciate the graphics when you can't see them clearly. It's not egregious at all. It's acceptable, but I really wish the resolution was higher. If they added dynamic foveated rendering to this game, it would be huge. But this is not game breaking. I do have one huge problem with this game, and that is that none of the interactions feel good at all. Sometimes I'll try to grab something multiple times before it actually registers. It's not very clear all the time what's interactable and what's not. The physics are subpar. Your hands are floating through a lot of objects. In fact, there's almost no physics with anything other than books on a shelf and a few other items that are sitting on tables. But the worst part is trying to grab things. I sat there for way too long trying to pull the crowbar out of the doors. And when it finally happened, it just did not feel satisfying. It almost feels like very early 2016 VR interactions. Sometimes I feel like horror games get away with stuff like this because people tend to be so distracted by the tension. And for good reason. This game certainly has very tense moments. Overall, my gripes are valid, but they don't completely take away from the game. It's just something that I wish was improved. And considering this team is new to 
VR, it's understandable. This is a good game, about an eight out of 10. I really love the immersive cinematic storytelling sequences. The sound design was great, even though they consistently reused a lot of the assets, I still found it to be endearing and well done. It felt like a good, fun adventure. Solid game overall, and I'm actually looking forward to playing it again on PC, because sharp visuals tend to be the norm on PC, so it's gonna be nice to have those graphics with a really sharp resolution. There are occasions where the resolution can actually look better on PlayStation VR 2 than PC. No Man's Sky is a great example. And the most recent one is Cube. I have been able to play both versions side by side, and despite the Steam version still being in early access, I still think it's interesting to see that the PlayStation VR 2 version looks so much better. It looks solid on PC, but the level of sharpness on PSVR 2 is pretty shocking. This is one of those very rare cases where the OLED panels actually make a big difference too. Personally, LCD's fine for me. I never notice a huge difference in contrast, but some games pop more than others, and this is a great example of that. Overall, the vibe of this game is great. There's a huge depth of gameplay here. I've heard comparisons to No Man's Sky in some ways. Some people think that No Man's Sky is a great game and others think that it's a big hollow sandbox. I tend to feel more like it's a big hollow sandbox, and I do think that there's a little bit of that here. Some people are gonna love this game, and some people are gonna get bored with this game. I do think that it's more approachable than No Man's Sky by a long shot, which is a huge plus, but I still think that it's gonna take a long time to get into this game in the way that you would need to in order to enjoy it. These kinds of games are not always for me, but I did find myself really enjoying this one. I do absolutely recommend this game on the PlayStation VR 2, but I haven't made it deep enough in this one to give an official score. It's trending towards mid 8s for me. It could be even higher once I get deeper into the game. Really quick, I'd like to touch on the PlayStation VR 2 version of Hellsweeper. I've already talked about this game in length in my co-op game of the year video, so if you've seen that video, you already know that I love this game. The gameplay is so much fun, and now that the graphical fidelity has been fixed on the PlayStation VR 2, and even updated a bit for the Quest 3, this is a must-play game, especially if you're interested in co-op titles. Alright, and that's going to do it for the more impactful games of the month. The one game that I did wish I got around to was Paint the Town Red. It sounds pretty divisive. I would have liked to check it out myself, but I'm only one man and there was too much to cover this month and a lot of these games were really long. But if you do think that I should check it out and give my thoughts on it, maybe I'll do that in April and get back to you guys. If you have played the game, I'd like to hear your mini review down in the comment section below. And thank you to all the devs out there who provided keys. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, we're going to get into this short story real quick about something that I touched on before, and that is that I was totally right about the direct connection to PC for the PlayStation VR 2. In the most recent PS PSVR 2 firmware update, they added support for NVIDIA graphics cards, and that right there was all we needed to know. If they were going to be doing a Steam Link app on PS5, they definitely would have announced it for flat first, because it would have been a huge value add to the PS5. But the bigger plus here is for PC VR players. We haven't seen a good affordable PC VR headset since the Reverb G2 came out in 2020. This has a lot of those same qualities, but with OLED panels, great haptics, adaptive triggers, headset rumble, and the best part is you don't have to worry about reprojection or low resolution on PC. Those are all settings that you can tweak with. The things that everyone hopes for in terms of visual clarity that we see in games like Legendary Tales or Hellsweeper now with the new update is how almost every game looks on PC VR. Assuming you have a decent PC, that is. I'm actually curious to see if I'm going to like it for PC over using the Quest 3. It's really OLED with Fresnel versus Pancake with LCD. It's certainly a trade-off, but the slightly higher resolution panels on the Quest 3 do make a little bit of a difference, so I'm interested to see how I'm going to feel about it once it's here. All right, let's talk about the amazing news that my friends over at Impact reality scooped up the modders who created some of the best VR mods out there like Firewatch and Half-Life 2 and created an official flat to VR port studio, something that we have been asking for for a very long time. This is a studio that is dedicated to bringing big and fully flushed out flat games and even eventually full on AAA games into VR. No longer do these flat devs have to worry about how to fund and make a VR port of their game. Now we have a studio that's going to do all of that for them. They just need the license to make the game and they will take care of the rest. I would not compare this to hybrid games because with the hybrid game, you just need the flat version of a game to play it in VR. This is more like what Armature did with the OG Resident Evil 4 on Quest. We have seen what these wizards can do using backdoor methods. Now imagine what they're going to be able to do with full access to these games. They've already been working on a game, and I'm sure eventually we will begin to see multiple AAA games per year ported into VR from this studio as it continues to grow and evolve. This is a huge deal for the VR industry and very important to VR gaming, so I can't
can't wait to find out what this secret first project is. And that's gonna do it for the absolutely packed month of March. April doesn't have too many things that are huge right now, but that can change any day. First, let's talk about Madison VR. This game was delayed out of March. It's been delayed numerous times, but this one actually had to do with a Unity update that allows developers to enable dynamic foveated rendering much easier. So that's what they're doing. And if you ask me, that's a really good reason to delay the game. So I fully expect it to be out in April. So get ready because this game should be good. Big Shots is a game that I talked about last month as a potential March game because it was slated to come out in the first quarter of the year, but it has an official release date now of April 18th. And yes, it is another roguelike, but adding in mechs and co-op is a great way to switch it up. So I can't wait to check it out. Soul Covenant is the newest entry from Third Verse, the developers behind Swords of Gargantua and Altair Breaker. This game certainly does look good based off of the trailers, but looks can be deceiving. There is co-op in this game as well, so I'm definitely going to be checking it out, and I'll let you guys know how I feel about it. Based off of the $50 price tag, they seem pretty confident, so that kind of does get me excited. The PlayStation VR 2 version of Genotype was supposed to release in April and accidentally got released onto the store without the day one patch, which to me isn't really fair, so I'm going to be covering this game as an April title because that's when it was supposed to come out, and any updates that they have made to the game since submitting it to Sony will be live in a few days. So I'm looking forward to checking out that version of the game. This game is awesome, so I'm sure it's going to be great on the PSVR 2. Anyways, thank you for sticking around. This was a long video. Overall, it was a very good month, a very busy month, and next month seems to be slowing down a little bit, but I welcome that. If there are any games that I left out that you think were worth talking about, let me know down in the comment section below, and maybe I'll try to check it out. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing, leave a like if you liked the video, and I'll catch you guys next time.